Hi everyone, Macedonian Heritage Night will start very shortly. Thank you for joining us. being patient with us. We're just giving people a few more minutes to join if that's all right. Hi everyone, um, welcome again. We're starting in about two minutes. I think it's beginning to fill up. We're just gonna give everyone a moment and then begin. Thank you again for being patient with us.
Okay, um, good evening everyone or good afternoon to those who are in Australia. Thank you so much for coming to Generation M's Macedonian Heritage Night. My name is Jana. My name is Amelia. And my name is Robert and we're so excited to have you all here virtually to talk about the beautiful and unique regions all over Macedonia. We know that every place in Macedonia has its own story and it may be impossible to hear them all, but we hope that with this event, we can get to know a little bit more about how special and distinct our country truly is. So first we would like to know, where are you all from? Uh, if you can just put it in the chat. Oh, Scorpio, Detroit. Detroit, very nice. Very nice. Bogdani, Bitola, Toronto, Belita. Yeah, a lot of us are also in Toronto, so. Very nice to see you all. Great to see more people from here. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you everyone for sharing. Um, to explain just briefly how this event's going to go, although virtually, a few are lined up and we're going to talk about a place close to our hearts, somewhere we consider home, uh, highlighting everything and anything from music to food and clothing and even the general landscape of the region. Uh, at the end of each presentation, uh, we are going to be playing Two Truths and a Lie. And basically we will give you three statements about that region where two are true and one is a lie. Uh, and we will ask you to find the false one through a poll that you'll be able to see once it comes up. So without further ado, uh, we'll start off with Robert who will introduce Nevoljani. Hi everybody, I'll be talking about my Baba and Dedo's village, Nevoljani. I hope you enjoy. So Nivolni is an Aegean village. It's located in the Larensko region, a five minute drive from the town of Laring and 40 minutes from Bitola. Nivolni rests safely in between the Kuluta and Kurajitsa mountains. And with the fertile land coming from the valley, uh, the Nivolnisi found success in farming. So Nivolni's history is very old and activity has been found in the area since late antiquity. Pre-15th century, the village was located along the main road between Kostur and Laring, and the village was known as Shuldur. Uh, it relocated three times, and the village got its current name, meaning misfortune or hardship due to Ottoman terrors. With uh, Nivolni's involvement in Nilinden and the Balkan Wars, the village experienced many attacks. With the partition of uh, Macedonia, Navalny, like the rest of Aegean Macedonia, had to survive a genocide by Greece. Um, many people from Navalny fought for Macedonian independence during the Greek Civil War. And after years of suffering, many from Navalny emigrated to Canada and Australia, specifically uh, Toronto, Hamilton, and Melbourne, uh, for a better life. Um, before the war, the village had a population of 3,000. And now, uh, after the war, there was 1,700 people left. So Navalny is a self-sustained uh, farming village. The villagers grow wheat, beans, fruit, and vegetables and hold livestock. Um, the villagers used to collect wood from the mountains to sell in Laring. Um, in the village, there were five churches, the Genoa church, the Sveti Dimitria, Sveti Ilia, and the Church of Our Lady Bogorditsa. The Church of Our Lady Bogorditsa was completed in 1910 with the help of donations from Navalny and the diaspora. It is the largest church in Navalny, and the village also has an elementary school, but high school is attended in Laring. In the Megden, people come to socialize where dances and festivals are happening to celebrate um, specific events. And this is the traditional costume of Navalny. The apron is very distinct with its um, designs. As you can see, um, the patterns are very unique. Um, Today, the costume is only worn during special occasions as well. The village won a event, a costume, um, a contest for the best costume, I mean, and was featured on a 1939 banknote. The men's costume is noticeably different from the women's as it is mainly black with a burgundy belt. 
compared to the colorful woman's costume. I think what's so interesting about Navolny is just how old it is. Learning about where my Bob and Dado come from is always fun hearing stories of the past, as Navolny has a strong oral history. I've heard it's quite common to find gold coins of Alexander in the ground around Navolny, as well artifacts have been discovered from the reign and times of Tsar Samuel. So uh, pertsalka is a rice and vegetable dish from Navolny, and it consists of tomatoes, onions, green peppers, rice, and dried mint on top of the onions. Um, it's simple but tasty meal, and it should be easy to make if anyone would like to try it. On the right are my Baba's cookies. Um, they're very popular all throughout Aegean Macedonia, especially during Easter, but I like them all year round. They go great with coffee, and if you'd like to see how to make them, check out Afternoons with Baba on YouTube. So the Lorenzo Oro is the most important song of Navolny. It is played during all festivals. The Oro is important during weddings as the bride's first dance. And although similar to Pustanso Oro, the songs are different. And um, I just like to share a video now of how daily life looked like in the in the Volony. So it's quite unique to see how uh, people lived back then compared to today. And um, now you should be receiving a poll. Um, feel free to quickly select an answer you think is the lie about Navolny. And I'll share the results in the end. So A, Navolny is a five minute drive from Larian. B, Navolny was featured on a 1939 banknote. Or C, Navolny means good fortune. So the answer was C, Navolny means good fortune. That was the lie. And um, Navolny actually means uh, misfortune or hardship, not good fortune, having to relocate from the Ottomans in the 15th century. I hope you all enjoy learning about an Aegean village. That's all for me. Next is Yana. Thank you, Robert. Um, I certainly learned quite a lot I didn't know before today. Um, I myself have roots from Tresonche, 
um, in part at least. And before I begin, I wanted to ask just in the chat if anyone had heard of this village by any chance, given it's such a small and relatively unpopulated one, I highly doubt it, but I thought it was worth a shot. <laughs> um, when we think about where Tresunche is located, um, it's a mountainous region in Western Macedonia, and it actually falls within the Mavrovo and Rostusha municipality, which might be more recognizable for everybody else. It's, well, one of my favorite things about the village is that it lays the top of the Bistra mountain range, which contains a lot of incredibly fascinating wildlife, um, including the Balkan lynx, um, which is native to the western region of Macedonia and borders alongside Albania and Kosovo. But mostly in Tresonche, you have a greater chance of seeing a species like a brown bear or wild goat, deer, bobcat, and the like. While the village is small, there are a few notable landmarks that one can see immediately upon entering the village. So for one, um, it's worth a visit to check out the Church of St. Nicola, which is just across from the Church of St. Peter and Paul. Its inscriptions state that it was built in 1873, while the Church of St. Peter and Paul just below it was built in 1844. It remains quite well preserved today, um, aside from some mosaics. It can be seen full of people as well on more important holidays, especially St. Peter's Day. There are also interesting symbols that are engraved uh, by the maker of the stone walls inside the temple. One of those is an image of a snake, which for Tresonche is actually quite telling because of how many live snakes there are in the territory. And the other is that of a bird. Um, as you can see, the church also has a beautiful bell tower. And next to that, you'll find a stone fountain, um, I believe constructed in the memory of the famous Dicho Zograf, who also has roots from this area. With regard to the traditional folk costumes of this regional group, it's often referred to um, as Miechkanusia, so that describes the sub-ethnic group of Macedonians that reside in this broader western northern region, and it extends across but is particularly centered in Tresonche, Galichnik, Rosoki, Silce, Gari, Osoy, and Lazaropole. The costume on the screen um, is very distinct with the woman's embroidery, but also the many fringes and the very heavy metal jewelry that is worn. For the male costume, it tends to reflect um, the group's role as cattle breeders um, in the mountainous region, which makes it bearable to have that very heavy wool costume on. I couldn't really think of a food that was super distinct to the region, but one that did come to mind and I'll touch on very briefly is bakardan. And it's simple. I think it's classic. I don't think it's up to a lot of people's tastes, but it's just corn flour, butter and water. Um, and the dish is most likely named after, I believe the mountain peak in the region of the same name. What I'll spend a lot more time on is just uh, what I think Tresonche and in general the Miachki Dil, the region, is most known for, um, aside from the ethnic group themselves, is their unique and identifiable flag. So the rod that holds it up, it commonly exhibits a wooden cross atop of it, which reflects the largely orthodox religious history of the people. Its colors are red, yellow, and white predominantly. On the red portion, we see symbolism of a cross, a double-headed eagle, and a crescent and star, to name a few. The double-headed eagle, I believe, uh, is meant to be a remnant from the Bogomil and Byzantium periods. Um, and it's also seen in a lot of the churches of the Balkan region, or the Macedonian region in general. Um, the star crescent, however, I don't know what the story with that is. It's believed to be either an Illyrian symbol or something that was enforced after Turkish rule. There's plenty of stories about the region. I'm not quite sure which are true and which aren't, but some of them stuck. The Cyrillic lettering on the flags um, indicate at the top Christ and at the bottom victory. Um, again, an homage to their religious um, traditions. 
In some flags, you might even see the Kutlash sun um, in the center. This flag in particular is preserved in Tresonche by the Pandilovci family, I believe, and it is said to be over 200 years old, uh, which is quite some time. The flag is also similar to the General Miak flag, but it does differ in some details, and those include the placement of the star and the moon, the double-headed eagle bearing a cross on its body, and some flags might even substitute the lion with a dog. These are also commonly seen during weddings, so if any of you plan, plan to attend the Galichka Svadba in Galichnik um, whenever borders are open and it's safe to travel, you might see one in person and I definitely recommend going in general. Tresonche also has a lot of secret uh, waterfalls and caves that are attached to one another and make for a wonderful detour from the churches and the landscape generally. I call them secret because I haven't actually had the opportunity to see them every time I've been but it sets the tone to mark this region of Western Macedonia as one of the cleaner environments you could probably visit. The water that flows through the river is certainly drinkable. I know because I have drunk it myself and on my last visit, um, it was quite clean and I'm still here to tell the tale, so it's totally okay. Uh, it sits also at a nice temperature of four to six degrees, so it's quite cool. And one of the larger waterfalls you can see in Tresonche are about 38 meters, which is, I think, substantial for that region. I'm not quite sure. And uh, finally, on that note, um, you should be receiving a poll, hopefully, in the next couple of seconds. Um, feel free to quickly select an answer that you think is the lie about Tresonche, and I'll share the results in the end. So the first one is the famous bridge Elenski Skok is located in Tresonche. Tresonche is a mountainous region. And then finally, the population of Tresonche refer to themselves as Miaks. This also is a bit opinion based. So I don't think um, some of these might actually be fully wrong. So. <laughs> It's pretty split on my end. Um, hopefully I can share it in a moment, but. So the answer is actually, um, a, A, A was the lie. So as much as I love Elinsky Skok, it's not located in Tresonche. Um, what actually um, occurred is Elinsky Skok is quite close and definitely worth a visit if anyone is traveling through the region. Um, but what it is a site of its own to behold. What its name translates to is essentially deer jump in or deer leap in English because the story attached to it uh, claims that there was one time an Ottoman Bey who was hunting a deer and the deer had escaped him somehow and uh, ending up on the other side of the river. And so the bridge was built in honor of that to mimic that type of high arced leap. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have on Tresonche. I'm glad I could share it with everyone on the Zoom. I hope that some of you do take the time to visit this uh, part of Macedonia. Not many people do. Um, whether it's your first trip or you've had a million back home, I certainly recommend it. But for now I'll pass it on to Emilia for another potential destination for any travelers here. Thank you, Yana. That was so interesting. I definitely need to take a trip to Tresonche next time I'm in Macedonia. Um, so I will be presenting about Divle, which is where I actually am from, from my dad's side. So where is Divle? Divle is in the outskirts of Skopje, the capital of Macedonia. And you can see how far it is from the city center by seeing the city center at the very top left of your screen here. And that little red dot on the very right is where Divle is. So where is Divle? Divle 
uh, is also very close to the Kumanovo border uh, and is uh, located below the mountain Bennett's. And once you enter, you can actually see a sign that says, welcome to Divle, please mind the nature, because there is a lot of it. So there are a few landmarks that help orient the people that visit, such as the main Cheshmir fountains. There is a Gorna, there is a Dona, and there is a Sredna Cheshma, or upper, lower, and middle fountain. Also, on every site and hill in, within the Silo, there are a total of seven crosses, such as this one, that are named after different saints to help orient everyone. There are also four churches. Here you can see Svetilia, which is from the 14th century, and Sveta Bogorodica. And Sveti Ilya is actually located within the site of Sveta Bogorodica. There's also Sveta Neda on the left, and Sveta Petka, the main monastery, and the patron saint for Divle, uh, which they celebrate every August. Sorry, Sveta Neda is on the right, and Sveta Petka is on the left. My apologies. So, um, as for food, Divle has a lot of nature. So they're mainly known for having wild berries, chamomile all the way up the mountain, honey and mushrooms. But they also have their own way of making traditional Macedonian recipes. So banitsa is actually rolled out with a sokolo instead of being stretched out. They also make bread in a stone baked oven uh, with a clay pot under uh, a vershnik, which you can see on the top right. And they actually make grafje or beans with a garne, a kind of clay pot, which you can see on the left. For nosi, they do wear the traditional skopska nosia, uh, where the girls wear thicker headdresses, uh, a cloth underdress or koshula, vest, a belt, or uh, an apron. And while the guys wear loose tops, skirts, and pants with a vest, belt, socks, and a hat. So what is Divle most known for? Aside from its nature and religion, Divle is also known for its history and family. In terms of family, a fun fact about the village is that everyone that has resided and has come from there has actually stemmed from a very limited number of families that are actually quite large. I am from two of them actually. So my dad's dad comes from the Spasevi family that goes back seven generations to the originating Petkovtsi family. Uh, whereas my dad's mom is actually from the root family of Jigerantsi. In terms of history, Divle is known as the nest for Komiti, or Gnezdo's Komiti, as many revolutionaries in the time of the revolution stayed, came from, or lived in Divle at some point. Just a quick question, everyone. Does anyone happen to know the Komita pictured on the right? No? Okay. Uh, this is actually revolutionary Lazar Vilkov, an originating Komita and Vimero member who is actually from Dibe and brought his whole crew there during the revolution. The song uh, that uh, is actually about the region is mainly about him. The song is called, uh, sorry, uh, the song is actually called Pesna za Lazar Vovojda by Krume Spasovsky. So now uh, it's time for two truths and a lie. You should know the drill by now. Uh, so I'm going to give you my three statements. So first, Divle is known to have blue water. B, Divle has more people in the village than animals. And C, Divle was named after a beautiful girl. looking pretty tied here.
All right. Again, tied between B and C. All right, so the answer is actually B. Dible does not have more people than animals in their village. Um, uh, so many people, in fact, do not live there. They simply do have their family houses passed, passed down, and they basically just come back for upkeep or major holidays, such as Svetopetka, uh, in order to, to just keep the traditional of the village alive, kind of like cottages. So uh, I think that's all from me for Dive. I'd like to pass on to Mito to present. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Robert, Yana, and Amy. Fantastic, fantastic job. And I'm so uh, pleased that you all uh, spearheaded this uh, initiative. Um, I'm going to present on Belitsa. And I apologize, there's some ruckus in the, in the background. Uh, hopefully you don't hear that. Um, great. I am actually going to share my screen now. Um, and it's going to go to, great. Um, so this is um, where Belitsa is located. Um, Skopje obviously is the capital. You drive south for about, you know, two hours, give or take, to um, to Kichevo. Um, and then I'm going to show you um, one more where I guess specifically where it's located. I apologize. Um, great. And oh, I think I shared the same. I Give me a second. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, I'm having some issues with my sharing the preview, um, but I'm going to go on with my uh, presentation. So, uh, Belitsa is a is a very small uh, mountainous. Um, uh, mountainous village um, near Kichevo, about give or take uh, 10 miles, 20 kilometers. Um, and uh, my father's side of the family come from this, uh, from this village. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the history, but I wanted to share some photos, um, aerial views, um, and please let me know. I think you can all see this. Um, I just want to make sure that, okay, I think now is the better um, sharing this. Oh, can you all see my screen? I just want to make sure. Yes. Yes, we can, Meta. <laughs> right, awesome. Sorry. Um, I think when when you're sharing on your end, sometimes it's difficult to to see if you're uh, sharing it. And so, um, I had the fortune of spending most of my summers in uh, Belita. Um, most of the town uh, left. Uh, I, I would say the 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 village. The villagers left. Uh, there was no road probably until the 60s and 70s between Kichevo and Bitola. Once the road was opened, the majority of the villagers left, moved to either Kichevo or uh, Bitola, some went to Skopje, and then a large part of the village uh, went to America, Canada, Australia, Germany, uh, Sweden, France, and, and, and other places. Uh, this is our coat of arms uh, of Belitsa. Alexandria 
uh, Alexandria is a major holiday for the village. It actually comes after Saint Alexander, and I think Saint Alexander made, meant uh, Alexander the Great, and uh, it's not a recognized holiday in the Macedonian Orthodox calendar. The village has tried to get it on the Orthodox calendar. Unfortunately, uh, I guess uh, Alexander the Great is not recognized as a saint, but the village, uh, every May 20 has a big festivity, um, a village holiday, uh, Alexandria, Sveti Alexandria. And you can see uh, the coat of arms, uh, you know, has the Kutlish uh, star, the Macedonian sun on its, uh, on the coat of arms. Uh, Saint George, Sveti Georgia, is the other, uh, he's the patron day uh, of the, of the village, and actually the church is named after uh, uh, the saint, um, and actually that's where I was baptized. My parents, uh, while I was born in New Jersey, my parents uh, brought me to Macedonia to, to be baptized um, in, in Saint uh, uh, Georgia, but this is celebrated around de uh, December 8th, and it's a fasting uh, holiday. Uh, and again, St. Alexander here um, uh, of, uh, you know, the Sveti Machinik Alexander. Um, and so, as I said, many people believe it, it is Alexander the Great. So these are some uh, homes that I wanted to uh, show you all. Uh, we have uh, trout, there's a uh, Ribnik, uh, the Belička Reka feeds into Treska or Velika Reka near Drugovo, which is a municipality um, that uh, runs uh, uh, Belica or Kichevo area. These are some of the uh, villagers uh, building our Silska Cheshma, and I'll show you how that looks very soon, but these are children, uh, I would say this picture is about 60 or so years ago, you could see the traditional Macedonian Belichka uh, Nosia, and I have uh, color photos as well. Meto, sorry, yeah. we can't see the photos, but I also think you can't see the chat, that's why I muted myself. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah. Let me. Um, you can, oh, okay. Well, now we could see them. I don't know oh, what happened. Okay. Sorry, I can't see the chat at the same time That's as okay. uh, showing these. Okay. Can you see the photos now? We can see the map and the vase. Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. Um, I'm going to have to. Okay. Um, I apologize for technical difficulties. It's all right. This is the okay. year of technical. How about how about now? <laughs> yes, yeah, we, see we can see it. Thank you. Excellent. Me. Okay. Did you did you see the trout? Okay, this is the trout. <laughs> now we have. <laughs> um, uh, that um, it's, uh, you know, a lot, of, this is farm trout, it's not the same trout, um, uh, you know, that's uh, endangered in Lake Okrit, um, but a lot of this trout is farmed on the Belichka uh, Reka, which runs through the village. Um, and this is our Silska Cheshma, which I'll show you a little bit later how it looks now. But growing up, it was a very small, uh, you know, uh, watering uh, watering hole. And my grandmother would tell us, go take the barde and go fill up uh, uh, the water. And we'd go every morning to fill up the water from this Cheshma. And we would drink that water, but you would not keep that water overnight. You would pour it out um, and you wouldn't drink in the next day. You would go again to the to the watering uh, hole. Um, and so this is um, some of the children. This picture was taken about 60 or so years ago, as I said. Uh, this is our Belichka uh, Nosia. Um, and it was a very vibrant village, about a thousand or so people. But once the road was built um, between Bitola and Kichevo, the majority left. In the last census, uh, they said 102 or so left in the village. Um, however, um, probably about 10 or 15, but a lot of people are going back um, from the diaspora, rebuilding their homes. Um, this is a picture from about 60, 70 years ago of the, uh, of the village. 
this is our chishma of how it looks now in the uh, in the center of the of the village. And so people from the diaspora have a fund uh, which cr they created, um, and together with the local mesna uh, zayenitsa, uh, they are remodeling uh, the village, um, paving the roads, uh, the church, whatnot. Um, this gentleman right here with the matches is my my grandfather Metodia, which I was named after. Um, this is our cooperatia. And so we have a building where all the men in the village go and, you know, basically drink and smoke and talk politics and play cards uh, and whatnot. And you could see some of these older, uh, older pictures of, uh, you know, the hay. And it's a primarily agricultural uh, village. And this is our uh, village wedding. Um, and as, as I said, you could see the Silska uh, Nosia, the traditional folk uh, uh, costume. Costume. Um, and once I, I brought back a costume uh, for my sister to, to wear and, and my mom was like, you know, what are you talking about? Your sister would never, you know, uh, be able to fit into one of these because apparently my grandmother and all these women had a very, uh, you know, small uh, a waist, which is not a custom sometimes, I guess. Um, and so definitely nobody could uh, be in the in the costume. And so we, we have it at our home uh, uh, still. And so you could see the, uh, the instruments and the, the village celebrations and, and whatnot. Again, my uh, grandfather here. So these are some modern day pictures now of the village. Um, we have Lazo Grueski, which was a, a voivoda uh, that passed away on that, or killed uh, in 1904. Uh, you could see some of the villagers uh, with our, you know, Macedonian um, symbols and, and whatnot, uh, a modern day uh, Christmas uh, photo. Uh, the village is very vibrant and active on social media. And you could see 1964, 1965, uh, some old homes, as I explained. This is our church, Saint uh, Saint George, um, and and I'll show you. Uh, so, if you notice uh, in the middle where all the people are dancing, one of the villagers decided to uh, to paint the Macedonian uh, sun, um, and so that will remain for for centuries to come. This is how the church looked uh, before the renovations that the diaspora did. Uh, this was the school. My father, uh, eighth grade, was the last year that the school operated. Communists, uh, when they took over, uh, I guess, and literally left the village because the village was very patriotic. And so uh, they they squeezed uh, the, the village, the economy, and all that. And many people left in the school. Uh, as I said, that was the last time. And so the villagers today, the, the diaspora community, have funded to rebuild. And this is going to be a community center um, and whatnot. And again, the folk uh, uh, costume, some of my aunts, um, some old, old photos of, of people from the village uh, dances. And what I wanted to show you is Turi uh, Potpechi or Yomleze, which is a common thing uh, on the mountains of uh, Debarca, Belica, um, and, and Ohrit. And basically, you can spend hours making this, but it's one of my favorite uh, dishes. It's like a crepe, and, and then you constantly, you know, uh, pour oil and a new crepe and, and bake it in the oven for, for several hours. And, and my grandmother would, would make this. Um, again, some modern day photos, the, the church, uh, some of the dances. And so the major holidays, like I explained, uh, May 20, uh, 26th. Uh, we also have the December 8th, uh, which is a more of the, you know, everybody at their own homes. And then we have the, uh, the Vodici, which they throw the cross in the uh, Belichka Reka, um, and uh, somebody tries to uh, catch uh, the cross and some of the uh, some of the goats here in uh, in, in the in the village uh, Yare um, inside the the church modern day uh, baptisms the priest is not local comes from uh, other neighboring areas um, one of our famous uh, persons from the village uh, is uh, Vlatko Lozanovsky, the the singer. Uh, one of the top singers, and we have a Belichki Sredbi festival every year that happens uh, in the center. Um, and this is the colors of the of the folk uh, uh, costumes, uh, modern day. Um, and 
my grandfather, uh, some of the students at the uh, at the school that I told you is is uh, run down and now uh, trying to rebuild it. Um, my my Baba Evdokia, uh, when I was uh, much younger and and had a full uh, head of uh, head of hair, and so that's where I will stop uh, sharing. But just a quick uh, notable thing about the village that I failed to uh, mention was St. Clement, um, the disciples of uh, St. Cyril and, and, and Methodi, uh, served as the first bishop of uh, Velika, um, or Belitsa, where the name uh, Belitsa comes from. And so I have a very fond memory. So I guess now we could turn it over, Amy, we could do the screenshot of the two truths and a, and a, and a lie. Um, and Belitsa, here you go, uh, I'll launch the, uh, launch the poll. Um, A is Jordan Piperkata was born in Belitsa. B, Belitsa is 21 kilometers from Kichevo. C, Belitsa's name comes from the word Velika. So uh, please uh, take, your, take your pick and I'll give you the, the answer. While you're all filling out, um, I do want to uh, plug in here. Uh, I'm so, again, I'm so proud of um, Robert, Amy, and Yana for uh, for spearheading this event, for showcasing different villages, uh, all of our villages, um, and and this is, you know, in in Macedonia and a lot of the Balkan countries. Uh, a lot of the development goes into the cities, larger towns, and the villages are forgotten. Many people move out. And I think there's a new and, and vibrant village tourism that's uh, growing um, and increasing in, in Macedonia. And so I encourage you all to, to definitely support village tourism, rural tourism in, in Macedonia. So I guess uh, we'll end the poll. And the answer, uh, the lie is uh, Jordan Piperkata is from Belitsa, is actually from Kozitsa, uh, which is the neighboring village and Belitsa soccer players and go against Kozitsa soccer players um, every year and we beat them. But, you know, Jordan Piperkata, the famous revolutionary is from Kozitsa. Thank you, Mito. It was um, really nice hearing about Belitsa. Um, just before we conclude, as uh, Katarina Sekulovska is here, um, she indicated she would like to speak a bit on Gavgelia, and um, she's welcome to do so if she still likes. Um, if not, that's all right, too. Um, I don't think uh, Katarina is here. Um, so lastly, we just wanted to open the floor to you all to ask if um, anyone would like to talk a little bit about uh, where they're from. And we would love to hear from you too. So if you'd like to uh, speak, just uh, there's a reactions uh, part at the bottom and just put your raise hand and we'll unmute you. Okay, um, I'll unmute Trico. Yeah, I just want to say whoever was talking about metal Nalishta and how the women wear heavy metal, I think maybe next year for uh, Osmi Mart, that could be like masculine girls rock. I like the imagery. This is a good, <laughs> good idea. <laughs> okay, I'll unmute uh, Julius Mosca. Hi everyone, um, my name is Julia and um, I come from, well, my father is from the most beautiful village in Macedonia, which is called Leonovo, which is near uh, Mavrovo region. It's, uh, there are four villages around Mavrovo Lake um, and it's mountain village. It's a beautiful village. Um, I recommend everyone who ever's got chance to go in 
in Macedonia to visit that part of Macedonia because it's really, really um, untouched beauty. And um, it's uh, from my mom's side, I'm from Bitola. So I'm like, usually I used to, when I was younger, I used to say that I'm from Bitola, but now I'm saying I'm from Leonovo. So, <laughs> so I think that's, um, you know, um, older you get, I guess uh, you get more attached to the, the most uh, uh, fond memories that you have as a kid. So yeah, that's my story. Thanks, guys. Thank you for sharing. Uh, if would anyone like to go next or share anything else, Dave? No. Uh, if not, we just like to officially thank everyone for coming. Uh, once again, uh, and uh, we want you all to know that Generation M will continue to hold virtual events uh, during the pandemic. We also sincerely hope you all enjoyed your brief time with us on Zoom, uh, even on a Friday night. Uh, we hope to see you guys all here again for future virtual events coming up. Um, you can also add us on our social media accounts, Gen Macedonia on Instagram and Twitter, and I believe it's just Generation M on Facebook. With that being said, uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. And again, thank you for spending it with us. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.